Hello, welcome to Scholastic Home Video Tutor. In this lesson, we are going to look at per unit analysis, power systems, and smart grid studies. Lesson number one. Using per unit analysis, we can reduce the difficulty of analyzing a power system with multiple transformers. This is achieved by normalization. The definition of per unit Quantity in per unit equal to actual quantity divided by the base value of the quantity. Actual quantity divided by the base value of the quantity. Let's see how are we going to use this equation. An example of per unit analysis. A power system consists of two transformers, several impedance elements and a voltage source as shown below. So two transformers, one here, one here, with turns ratio 1 is to 100, 4 is to 1, and a power source and several impedance elements. If VBL equal 20 volts, this B means the base value of the voltage at the left side of the system, L. This is L, M, and right. And the power of the system is 2 kV ampere. This is common for any branch here, 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 all SB equal to 2 kVA. Then using per unit analysis, calculate the voltage across EZL and the source current, the current drawn from the source. This is what is given. And what we try to find out is the base values of the respective branches. We know the first one, base value of the left one, is given as 20 volts. To calculate the base value of the middle one, base voltage of the middle branch here, uh, we have to multiply by the turns ratio. This is a, this is a step up transformer. Therefore, N2 over N1 times VBL, VBL, left side of the voltage, which is 20 volts times N2 equal to 100 divided by 1. So this 2 kV is the voltage at the middle branch, the, the base voltage of the middle section of this, of this system. And now we need to find the right, right one, the voltage at right, which is given by VBR, base voltage of the right side equal to VBM, middle one multiplied by the turns ratio. This is a step down transformer and therefore voltage will become reduced. So this N2 over N1 dash, we call this one N2 over N1 dash, this is N2 over N1, N1. So uh, when you substitute the values, N2 equal to one, N1 is equal to four, and VBM was equal to two kilovolts, so substitute, substitute there, and then you get 0.5 kilovolts, which is equal to 400 volts as the voltage at this point, this section of the system. Okay, now we try to get few equations for impedance. Uh, just trying to find out what, how to define impedance. But before that, we know what is the definition for power, which is equal to VB, V times I is the power of the system. And voltage is equal to IR, I times R, I times Z in this case. So all are base values. So our question here is, can we find ZB if you are given SB and VB. So that means naturally we need to get rid of IB. So there are two equations. To get rid of IB, you divide one by the other. So divide one by the other, you get SB over VB equal to VB over ZB. IB will go off. And therefore we can find ZB equal to VB squared time divided by SB. And now we can calculate the ZB for each branch of the circuit is at each section of the circuit this is the left section vbl divided by sp vbl squared divided by sp vbl was 20 and sp is 2 10 to the power 3 and which will give 0.2 ohms similarly middle section 2 kilo ohms bear in mind we are going to put vbm the voltage of the middle section divided by the power 2 kilo ohms Similarly, right section, 125 ohms. Now we are going to use these base values to normalize the components of the circuit. So our circuit now will become like this. These are the components without transformers now. 
and we have the source we divide the source one uh, 20 angle 0 by 20 volts which is the base voltage at the left hand side so it will become one angle 0 and the base voltage uh, the base impedance at this branch left hand branch is at BL is 0 0.2 so when you divide 10 by point you can see it's 0 0.2 and 2 kilo ohms 125 so 10 divided by 0 0.2 and 2 plus J5 divided by 2 kilo ohms and 15 divided by 125 ohms this is is it B left is it B middle is it B right and actually you can see in this uh, in this particular example this can be neglected because 2 plus j5 divided by 2 to the power 2 times to the power 3 is very small uh, two quantities which are very small when you because we are we have a series impedances here three series impedances 1 2 3 and when you take them in series basically this uh, this this impedance will become negligible so we uh, take it as zero Therefore, because in compared to this one, basically it is 2, 10 divided by 0.2 to the power 50. So then these are something divided by a bigger number. So therefore, we can write the per unit, I per unit, current in this uh, this circuit using Kirchhoff voltage law. Voltage divided by the series, uh, three resistances in series. So we add this to this to this, this will become 0. And therefore, this to this, 50 plus 0.12. Ohms. So when you simplify it's 20 times the minus 3 per unit. So please note that the current that you get here is called I per unit current and therefore there is no unit here. We normally use the, 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 the unit is per unit not amperes. And the task now is to find out the base uh, current at the source the uh, actual current at the source so we need the base current at the source which is equal to i base left which is given by v base left your divide by z base left which is again come from v equal to ir and v base left is 20 volts and z base left is 0.2 ohms therefore i base left equal to 100 amperes the base current of the left hand side of the circuit is 100 amperes so if you know per unit multiply by the base current then you can get the actual current so therefore the actual source current is equal to i base the left hand side multiplied by i per unit please note that i per unit is constant is same for all three branches because it's just uh, one circuit now there are no transformers and the current is flowing throughout these all elements therefore whenever you want to find out current in any of the branches we need to find out the per the base current of that particular branch and multiply by the per unit. If you want to find the current in the middle middle uh, part of the circuit, you need to multiply the I per unit by the I base at the middle. Similarly, I base at the right. So here the question only requires the source current. Therefore, I base at the left times I per unit. It was 100 amperes times 20 times to the minus 3 angle 0. Here we get angle zero because our complex uh, the uh, the impedance quantity we neglected. If you had to use this one uh, with a bigger number, you will get an uh, angle here. So in this case, still the angle is zero. So the total the source current is two amperes. Basically, there is no angle, so we can just uh, neglect the angle. And similarly, uh, when you come to the next part, when you want to find out the voltage across load. Uh, here we need to find out the base volt. The, the base voltage is uh, we need to use the base voltage at the right hand side times the per unit voltage. So we have the per unit current times the impedance will give us the per unit voltage here times for uh, the ba the base voltage will give us the actual voltage. Again, in this case also we either can drop zero or just can use it. In this case, I put it as zero. That means this is the base, uh, the per unit current times the base voltage, base voltage times the per unit impedance. So it gives us the the load voltage, which is equal to 1.2 angle zero volts. That is the solution to this question on per unit analysis.